Nina, come on, why? Jesus freaking gamer here, back with more Job this time, chapter 31. And this is actually where Job ends all of his words. This is where he stops talking, and, and his friends also stop talking, and a young man will come in. We'll introduce him tomorrow. But today, um, we're talking about, once again, Job's righteousness and how his ways and his works were righteous before God. Um, there are two messages I really could come at you with from this chapter, but there's one kind of hits me square between the eyes, so I want to acknowledge that and be honest about it. And I, I, while I'm at it, I'm going to hit you guys between the eyes too, because it's only fair that you share in my pain. And this, by the way, on the topic, um, you'll understand once I start reading, I just want to say that this topic applies to men and women equally, that men are not singled out here. With that in mind, Job chapter 31, verse 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? For what is the allotment of God from above, and the inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is it not destruction for the wicked, and disaster for the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways, and count all my steps? If I have walked with falsehood, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, let me be weighed on honest scales, that God may know my integrity. If my step has turned from the way, or my heart walked after my eyes, or if any spot adheres to my hands, then let me sow and another eat. Yes, let my harvest be rooted out. Hands? Eyes? Huh. If my heart has been enticed by a woman, or if I have lurked at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind for another. Hello. And let others bow down over her. Whoa! For that would be wickedness. The O oh and woe was mine. That was not in the Bible, by the way. Yes, it would be iniquity deserving of judgment, for that would be a fire that consumes to destruction. It would root out all of my increase, or root out all my increase. No of there. Holy smoke, Job. Thank you very much for that imagery in my head right there. And unfortunately, due to the amount of porn I, can see, I have seen, I can imagine it extremely well. So, can anyone else uh, raise their hands and say, Yeah, I, I'm as guilty as sin. I cannot claim what Job said there. His purity and his righteousness exceeds mine. Anyone, anyone, everyone's raising their hand. You're not raising your hand. You're a liar. And you know you're a liar. I think I've met... I've met one man. Because I, obviously I don't talk about women, about their porn and masturbation habits. Eyes and hands... A spot adhering to the hand, heart walking after the eyes, yeah. Um, I think we know what Joe was talking about there. Holy smoke. Um, I've talked to one man who I think potentially has walked in purity. One. My entire 36 years of existence. Guys, this is... <laughs> I'm beat. I'm beat. Uh, Job's got me. Job's got me good. I cannot stand before his purity and his righteousness. I want to. I really want to. But I can't. And most of you can't either. I will leave it as an exception. I said, if you said, if you, said you are pure, you're lying. Well, I just said, I've talked to one guy. I've talked to one guy who I be would believe is telling the truth on that subject. And it's something that he started walking in recently, not forever, not from the age of his youth, but recently. And he is in his mid to late 40s, and he's finally started walking in purity. By the way, he's also been married for, uh, for several decades, so there's that as well. Guys, uh, I understand that there's the exception to the rule, but most of us would have to, at this point, bow out and say, You know what? I'm a filthy sinner. Goodbye. And at that, let's just once again reflect on, let's just reflect on what Job was able to accomplish, on the purity that he really did have in his heart. <laughs> Suffered more than most of us, was way more righteous than most of us. He set such a wonderful example that we can always follow. And it's just one more reminder to me, hey, Brandon, start thinking with your big head and not your little one. And yes, I said that in a preaching video, and I don't, there was no profanity involved there. I don't apologize for that. It's, it's the truth. Um, that's something I need to work on. It's something 99.99% of you guys need to work on. And a pretty high percentage of the ladies, from my understanding, also need to work on it. So guys, let's set some goals. 
Let's set some standards. Let's raise them high so that we can say one day with Job that our heart doesn't walk after our eyes and that there is no spot adhering to our hands. Hmm. Eh. Anyway, that, <laughs> I'm going to be candid, open, and honest in this. I won't use any profanity in my in my preaching videos, except for unless if I'm quoting someone, I want to accurately quote them. I don't want to short them of what they said. I don't want to put words or take words out of their mouth. So, and I, I want to accurately represent them on my part. So other than a quote, you won't hear profanity during these preaching videos, but I'm going to be honest with you about the way life works, about what's in my heart. I'm going to be honest with you to the best of my extent of what's in your heart as well. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you. And God bless.